Men often find themselves blindsided by a culture that hates authentic masculinity, and many have given in and succumbed to the ever-evolving culture and woke society. But not us. We are the remnant, faithful Catholic men from three different generations who reach through the radio to tackle current events that challenge our wills and empower the practice of the Catholic faith through thought-provoking discernment and prayer. So, if you're feeling overwhelmed and bombarded, it's time to turn your radio up and join us for The Remnant on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network. Hello everybody and welcome to The Remnant here on the Carolina Catholic Media Network. I'm Bill Snyder. It's wonderful to be with you. Um, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend and co-host, Ray Haywood. Uh, Ray, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Um, excited about this episode that we have going tonight uh, with, um, you know, all the news that's fit to print. But first, I'd like to address, you know, our co-host, Stephen, Stephen Thomas. Uh, there's some people out there that are missing him on our program. I want you to know that he's got a lot of new beginnings happening. He's going to be getting married this month, and hopefully he'll be back with us shortly. So we feel the same way as you. His uh, interaction here is needed. So um, let me just uh, quickly bring us into frame on uh, how the topic of this episode came to be. So I grew up in Brooklyn, and back in the 80s, I was in a uh, vocational technical school in Coney Island. It was named uh, William E. Grady. And in like my first or second year, I had a history teacher. And what he brought to the awareness of the class early, like at the very beginning of the semester, was what's at the top of the New York Times. It says, all the news that's fit to print. And what he brought to our attention was how the media utilizes their influence on how society is moved. We could go back to that, you know, episode, past episode where we spoke about social capital and how it used to be held in faith and family. Now it's in politics and media. You know, that's what sways us. That's where the capital is held. But more, I would like to bring focus on how we as men can bring this type of critical thinking to younger men, especially younger fathers, for them to understand how they need to navigate the chaotic worldly narrative. And, you know, the way that uh, that teacher did it was beautiful. I mean, it, it's funny how when you're young, things catch you and you remember these moments your whole life. For you younger viewers, you could think back and you could, uh, you know, have some perspective. But the older guys like me, you know, that it's beautiful when you can look back and you just know when there's something different in life being presented to you. It's really, uh, it's uh, something that pulls you, pulls at you. You know something is different outside of the norm. So, what I'd like us to, to consider in this critical thinking of uh, all the news that's fit to print is how things are presented to us. And I would like to share that I feel finding simple answers in how this is all presented can be found in good intent. If we in our character have good intent, then finding good intent is easy for us to do because we will recognize it because it's part of our character. And, but if we're somebody who allows the worldly narrative, all this chaos to take a hold of us, pull at our heartstrings and make us have unrest and all the, the device of devising that's going on, you know, um, this, this is not productive. So we need to know that good intent, good decisions lead to good results in everything. And it helps us to decipher where truth is, good intent is. And, uh, you know, Bill, you got any thoughts on where we are at this point before we move further? Yeah, you know, absolutely. I think when you talk about intent, I, I, I want to point out that the media, the mainstream media, is controlled by a very small percentage 
of the population. I am a media practitioner, right? I'm, I've spent my uh, career working in media and creating media. I've also spent uh, time studying media, right? Uh, I have my degree in communications, specifically in television, radio production, mass communications, right? Uh, these platforms, these new platforms that go out, um, you know, relatively new in human history, right? I mean, we're talking about, when you, when you, like, when you talk about this radio, you're talking about really from the 1920s to today. I mean, we're talking about the last hundred years of the um, human history. And what this has done uh, for, for tonight as we're talking about it has sped up the way humans interact with one another. But those who have microphones and those who have cameras are a very, very small percentage of the population. And I, I want you to understand that what that means is that the remainder of us, in fact, all of us, whether you are on this side of the microphone or you're on that side of the microphone, um, you are a consumer of some type of media today. And therefore, um, you have to recognize what the media is doing. It is doing one thing, trying to influence you. And whether it be commercials, which are outrightly trying to influence you, or it is uh, more subtle, like primetime television, um, and the changes we have seen in primetime television just in the last five years, um, you, are, you are looking at a group of people, a very, very small group of people, that are able to have a gigantic impact on the masses of the world. Uh, and this has come into human history, really, in the last 100 years. So I just want to put that in perspective uh, as we go forward today, Ray, uh, because, you know, this is what we're dealing with. Correct. And look at what's going on right now in this moment that we're living through with Twitter. And you could see so much. If, if you have good character, you can see there's no good intent in this. There's there is. And uh, so let's move past it. Let's go to something that we could actually look back on to gain some perspective. So uh, media influence is not a new concept. And I wanna bring up the book, you know, by C.S. Lewis, Abolition of Man, okay? And this was written back in the 1940s in England by C.S. Lewis. And he explains how the um, controlling uh, the, you know, the people of influence use the books that are placed into the education system to control the next generation. This is a powerful book. And what it shares is how society is controlled through education. And when you think about this being written back in the 40s, and now you look at it and read it today, and you see what he played, what he placed out before the readers back then, and you look at what's going on in our society right now, I want to challenge our young brothers, especially to think just like in the book, Tools to Ready the Journey, chapter two is, you know, our thoughts are not our own. This is intentional. We are being divided. We are being pitted against each other and we're allowing it to happen. We need to recognize that there's control in our physical world, that if we're not close in our spiritual world to understand what good intent is, we can actually have malice against our brother. And it's not even his fault. It's not our fault. This is intentional. So if we could take a look at this in an objective way to find real truth in the way that media has over the ages, and you could see this going back. I mean, this is, what, 80 years ago that we're looking at this was, no, I'm sorry, not 80 years ago. Uh, yeah, 
right, yeah, almost 80 years ago. This was in the 1940s. So what I'd like to uh, somehow let our older listeners digest and, and, and contemplate is as older men, we need to recognize this type of awareness and share it with those younger men. When we see younger men and they have this uh, abstinence, of, uh, you think one way, I think the other. This, this is intentional. We're, we're being divided. And if the wisdom of us older men don't see this for what it is and share it with the younger men so that they can get a peaceful resolve back, then we're not doing our job. We're not handing on well to the next generations. I'm going to be a little specific of Catholics because that's where, you know, in my heart lays. I, I want to, you know, provide simple answers to that next generation of Catholics. What do you think, Bill? I, I think um, what you offer is really, really um, important. And, you know, when when we look at this, from from that perspective we can we can see a, a couple of different things um, number one is that you know in order to stand up as you were talking about to the regime of what is going on we have to break free from the technology now what i mean by that is that we have to show self-control, right? It's really important that we show as men self-control when it comes to the raising of our kids with technology and with uh, the media. The media surrounds us like water surrounds a fish. We're never going to get rid of it. But we can choose when we pay attention to the water and when we don't. So while it's swimming around us, while it's you know constantly around us, we can choose to pay attention to the water or we can choose to pay attention to something else. Um, and so what I would say, and there's some really great books out there, there's one called Screen Kids, by um, Gary Chapman, which is phenomenal. Uh, I, I encourage you to read it uh, because what, what he does, he talks about how to put the limits on te technology for yourself and for your kids. No, we're not going to sit there and watch four hours of television every night. You know, uh, there was a big study done several years ago um, by George Gerbner. And he said that if you watch or consume four hours of television or more a night, that you believe the world is a scary and dangerous place. It doesn't matter what content you watch. You could sit there and watch four hours of Sesame Street and believe that the world is a mean and nasty and scary place. I don't know about you, but I don't want to raise my kids that way. Um, and I don't want to be that. So I know that in my, in, you know, as, as somebody who works in this, and I will not um, allow myself or my, my kids to... Um, consume that much media every day i just it's what won't. you do and it's right what you um and, it, and it's hard it's it, it, it's getting increasingly harder right um and the other the other big thing too um that we can believe in along this road and along this journey is the fact that um we have to go along with the predominant thinking just like you believe that the world is a mean and nasty place if you watch four or more hours of television well think about all of the ideas and concepts that are being thrown out into the into the world right you begin to adopt those 
just by the subtle training of the mind that the media is doing. So, so the more limits you place on yourself with uh, television, with you know, media consumption, the more you're going to be able to think for yourself, right, and, and not go along with the rest of this. Um, you know, I, I know we've said it before on, on the program, but in order for you to first tolerate something, you have to disagree with it. <laughs> and I know you like to take that a step further, Ray, so I'll let you do that. Yes. Um, you know, um, the problem with what you just said is if for, for us to tolerate something, we disagree with it, yes, but the next generation they don't understand the disagreement. They only see the acceptance, not that we accept it, but the acceptance because it's something that we didn't push back against. So over the generations, they chip away at us a little at a time, a little at a time, a little at a time. So, you know, it's like a thief. He starts out with a pack of gum. And then when he gets caught and he's going to jail, he looks back and he says, how did I get here? Well, society is the same thing. You know, uh, what we accept a little at a time becomes easier as time goes on. So I just want to um, read uh, one of the quotes that jumps out at me from the Abolition of Man book. It's on page 26, and it says, we make men without chests and expect of them virtue and enterprise. We laugh at honor and are shocked to find traitors in our midst. We castrate and bid the guildings be fruitful. I mean, there's a lot said there. And, you know, this is, there's no role models out there for our young men to look to as intentional good men. So where, and for, for a father who's doing really well in the four walls of his home, when he goes out into the public square, a lot of times they can't help themselves but just to mirror it's so hard to reflect well when people act a certain way. You just, like what you said, you kind of conform. So we have to really understand how important it is that our children are always watching. And even with all the good intent we put in, in the four walls, in the confines of our homes, we have to still let our children see that when we go out into the public square. You know, when that person is being nasty to us on the on-ramp, we have to say a prayer in front of our children, you know, or when somebody is trying to push their way in front of you on the line, you can't, you, know, you have to be better. And sometimes to be better means that it, you think in your mind that you're looking weak, but you're not looking weak to your child. You're, you're looking strong. It's in our weakness that we are our strongest. And if we could actually do this, and I'm telling you, this ain't easy for me either, but I'm aware of it at least. So, you know, that's the difference. We, we, we need to let these young men know that they're not pitted against each other through their own thoughts. Their thoughts are not their own. They're pitted against each other to divide us because the, in, the, in the division, we lose our strength. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you know, this is, this is such a good conversation. It's a necessary conversation. And as you said, you know, Ray, um, at least I'm aware of it. And I think that's one of the biggest things. Once we're aware of it, we can take even small steps to overcome, you know, and and work to guard our children and ourselves and our families. So Amen. it we're not going to we're not ever going to get rid of the media. It's not going to go away. There's no way you can shut off every screen in today's world and go live in the middle of nowhere like that's you know, you have to be a hermit to to avoid this and it's and you know for the majority of us that's not a practical way of living so um i think our prayer for you in this you know is is to be aware of this and to draw awareness to it because then it can scratch at you over the week and say hey am i picking up my phone way too much am i watching way too much tv yeah probably how can i cut back how can i get my uh, kids to cut back. Um, again, wonderful book, Screen Kids. Um, I'm still in the middle of reading it, but it's really wonderful. Uh, so I encourage you to all to check it out as uh, as dads and fathers. 
Um, but we have to take a short break here on uh, this episode of The Remnant. When we come back, we're going to uh, talk with you about our uh, saint of the week, who is Saint Gabriel, the archangel, and uh, of course, leave you with the Remanet challenge. Uh, but we'll, we'll be right back after this here on the Carolina Catholic Media Network. Stay tuned. Hello, my name is Ray Haywood, and I'm coming to you today to speak to you about the fraternity of Saint Joseph Men's Group, a men's group that was started under the leadership of Father Matthew Codd by the intentional men of the parish of St. Thomas Aquinas here in our Diocese of Charlotte, North Carolina. In our first efforts, we were asked if we would model our men's group in a way that other parishes could simply follow. With that intent in mind, we created the FSJJourneyman.com website. On that website, you can find all that is needed to create your own chapter of the Fraternity of St. Joseph Men's Group in your parish as well as resource documents that we are intentionally placing into our faith community. We hope that you will step closer to the path and to each other in the just model of St. Joseph as you consider creating your own chapter of the Fraternity of St. Joseph Men's Group. The Shroud of Turin is one of the most researched and studied relics in church history and profoundly impacts many who encounter its mystery. As a person of faith, looking at it through the eyes of faith, um, I don't think it can help but, uh, but touch your heart. Something that we can look on, not only to bolster our faith in those moments of weakness, but also to deepen our faith and our appreciation, our intimacy with Christ. Join Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry as they examine the science of the Shroud through the lens of faith. Really interesting scientific information that I, we didn't know about, uh, like the pollen from all the different regions of the world. That's all, as the shroud traveled around, it picked that up. Some of the mites, uh, things like that was really interesting to me. I mean, it, it's made you really want to believe it a lot more. It's impressive. Like, humanly, I don't think, like, that is another level of love. It's not a... a, a I'm going to see people like, oh, I love you, I'll give you a chocolate. No. I'm giving you more than my life. I'm giving you my suffering. Asking both experts and disciples, who do you say I am? Um, as far as who the man of the shroud is, I, as a, as a person of faith and kind of reviewing the evidence there, it, it seems that a convincing argument can be made that it's, it's Jesus of Nazareth. Visit patchworkheart.org slash shroud to learn more and get exclusive behind the scenes updates for your support. Twenty twenty two is bringing many new and exciting changes to our Carolina Catholic Apostolate built to communicate how to better learn, love and live our Catholic faith. We begin with our name change to Carolina Catholic Media. This reflects the expanded scope of Carolina Catholic Radio to include the development of our podcast, streaming, social media, YouTube, and direct marketing platforms. 2022 is a very important year for the Catholic Church. As a result, Carolina Catholic Media will feature more local news, information, and conversation to reflect what's happening now and how it impacts our local Catholic community. Throughout the year, Carolina Catholic Media will showcase our Catholic schools and homeschools the Charlotte Diocese 50th anniversary, and the two-year worldwide synod process that begins on the diocesan level. We encourage you to get involved, join us, and catch the spirit. The Carolina Catholic Media Apostolate is a 501c3 nonprofit. We are 100% funded by you. Please consider a donation, monthly tithe, or business sponsorship to support our mission and vision to spread the truth of Jesus Christ and our Catholic faith across the Carolinas. Thank you for discerning a role in our apostle. May God bless you abundantly. Welcome back to The Remnant on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network. Welcome back to The Remnant Show. Um, this week's Saint of the Week is going to be Saint Gabriel, uh, the Archangel. It's uh, pretty cool. Uh, a lot of times before we'll start uh, a show will say a prayer to St. Gabriel because for our technology to work. And I can't tell you how many times 
we have problems with technology. It's nuts. <laughs> but um, St. Gabriel is one of the three archangels mentioned in sacred scripture. So we have St. Michael in Revelations, St. Raphael, Tobit, and St. Gabriel in Luke. That's just one uh, example of St. Gabriel. But the name Gabriel means man of God in Hebrew. Uh, the word angel is from Greek, ageloso, and means messenger. Imagine. So St. Gabriel appear, appears sharing messages many times throughout the Bible, both named and unnamed in these appearances. Archangel Gabriel is best known for his appearance to Mary. The first joyful mystery, in my opinion, shares this encounter best. You know, uh, it's the Annunciation. The Archangel Gabriel announces to the Blessed Virgin that she has been chosen to be the mother of the Messiah, the mother of God. She responds, be it done unto me according to thy word. You know, powerful stuff there. And uh, St. Gabriel is the patron saint of messengers, communication workers, and postal workers. Those postal workers, they need prayers. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, though? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I think we all we all need prayers. And, you know, St. Gabriel uh, being the patron saint of uh, communication workers uh, and uh, communications in general um, is is awesome because, you know, he's he's. Uh, the archangel, obviously, that delivers the most important message uh, from heaven, um, which is that of the coming of Jesus through the Blessed Virgin Mary. But I, I want to focus on another angle of that same story because, um, you know, now while the Bible does not exactly list St. Gabriel as the angel that uh, appears to Joseph to tell um, Joseph that the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, was with child from the Holy Spirit. We know that um, that an angel of the Lord did appear. And um, there is strong belief that it was St. Gabriel in both instances. Now, I mean, again, it's not explicitly stated in the Bible, but church tradition, uh, some in church tradition would tell you um, that the angel of the Lord was Gabriel in both instances, the one that appeared to Mary to tell her, yes, you have the child, and the one that appeared to Joseph um, also was St. Gabriel. And I, and I want you to reflect on this in light of our conversation in the last segment, right? Like, here, here we are um, with this story of the birth of Christ. And uh, think about it in context, right? Like, if, if any other woman had gotten pregnant um, during a betrothal, you would have the absolute right in Jewish culture to just cancel the wedding. Like, this is not, you know, I, I believe even stone the woman. Like, this is, this is it, right? We're, we're, you know, we're done with this. I, this is totally off. And um, think about it in terms of our media, right? Like, Imagine if that happened in today's world. Imagine if what happened happened in today's world. S somebody would make an announcement saying, oh my gosh, this person, <laughs> or maybe even on Twitter, right? Uh, somebody would make this announcement that would say, oh my gosh, um, do you believe what this person did to that person? But St. Gabriel steps in, or this angel of the Lord steps in, and appears to Joseph offline, right? Outside of the world, outside of, the, of all the swirling stuff that was going on. St. Gabriel, or in, in, in legend, appears to St. Joseph and says, hold on a minute, you don't have to listen to that entire media mob. You don't have to listen to that mob. That mob is not correct. I am correct. The Holy Spirit has given the child to Mary. You are to stand up and to lead. And what does he do? He pushes through the culture. He pushes through the culture at the words of St. Gabriel. And he says, yeah, I'm going to stand up for Mary. And I'm going to take her anyway. And that is the mindset I think we have to have when it comes to this. You know, listen to the true messengers of 
the gospel. Listen to the true messengers of God, right, in, in today's society. And that's getting harder and harder, too, right? It's getting harder and harder to find that. Uh, in our churches, it's getting harder and harder to find that. But we can have confidence and know that this deposit of faith that was handed on to us, um, you know, this, th- this catechism, this, this beautiful uh, tradition of the faith that is handed on from St. Peter all the way to Pope Francis is true. And when we follow it, we can avoid and push through the, <laughs> that media mob that's out there. Um, so again, um, maybe, may, did, did I take a little bit of creative license with St. Gabriel there? Possibly because it doesn't explicitly state St. Gabriel, but, um, many do believe that it was the same angel. Um, so that's, that's my challenge. Uh, that's my, uh, reflections on it. My remanent challenge is to push through the culture, um, and, you know, possibly pick up the book, Screen Kids, or there's plenty of other good resources out there and arm yourself with the knowledge that it takes, um, and even the suggestions, you know, from, from others on how best to push through this culture. Because, again, we're not going to get rid of the media. Our, our job is not to defeat it. It's to use it um, for good, like we're doing right now, but also um, understand that we've got to put limits on it. So that's my remanent challenge. How about you, Ray? So it's funny. Um, we were talking before we did this program, and – uh, I do show notes all the time and I shared with Bill, uh, you know, he read the show notes. One of the things that I always say to my sons is to push through it. It's, it comes up very often now that they're older because this world of instant gratification that as Bill was alluding to earlier, how we're just, we're touched by media, we're touched by the culture so, you know, our, our, we don't want to suffer through anything. My sons are young men. They still need to find a lot of wisdom in life. So um, a, a lot of the times what I'll say to my sons, and it won't be a welcoming comment to them, is to push through it. Because if that means, in other words, this is life. You have to just take what comes. And if you put good intent in, you'll get good results out. So just keep chipping away because this world wants to make you take away that good intent. So, but my remanded challenge is for our younger brothers to find their own guiding principles, not to be part of the culture, but to go back to like, listen to that podcast that we did on um, uh, social capital, understand how faith and family is what used to guide us before we had all this media influence that we can't get away from. It's so funny. Listen to what Bill said. He said, it's like water around us. Think about that. I mean, that's a very good analogy because we are so surrounded in media. It's wild. Just four hours and you're going to have bad feeling, crazy stuff that Bill brings to us. But um, so again, uh, young men, Please find within yourself guiding principles, find character in other men. Look for the, if you have good intent, you'll be easy to identify what good intent looks like. For us older men, we need to share this type of awareness with the younger men. We need to be intentional to grab them and say to them, hey, look, this matters, you know, like that teacher did for us. When we were kids, that teacher spoke into us more than just the subject, the, the you know, the, 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 the material he was supposed to present. He, he cared for us. We need to do that. It's a beautiful thing. So, um, yes. Bill? Oh, this was, uh, this was an awesome episode, Ray, and I appreciate, uh, you know, our conversation. And as we wrap up, I want to remind everyone uh, that this show is sponsored by the Fraternity of St. Joseph Men's Group, and you can visit fsjjourneyman.com to review the easy-to-follow resource documents and consider starting a chapter of the FSJ Journeyman uh, group in your own parish today. Um, and because of that, um, you know, that's a great place to start. Uh, that's a, also a great place to start, um, you know, standing up for your faith, uh, looking at those resource documents and getting things started. But until next time, from all of us here at Carolina Catholic Media Network and The Remnant, may God bless you and your families.
Thank you for joining The Remnant today. For more information about us, email theremnantshow at gmail.com. That's the R-E-M-E-N-A-N-T show at gmail.com. The Shroud of Turin is one of the most researched and studied relics in church history and profoundly impacts many who encounter its mystery. As a person of faith, looking at it through the eyes of faith, um, I don't think it can help but, uh, but touch your heart. Something that we can look on, not only to bolster our faith in those moments of weakness, but also to deepen our faith and our appreciation, our intimacy with Christ. Join Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry as they examine the science of the shroud through the lens of faith. Really interesting scientific information that I, we didn't know about, uh, like the pollen from all the different regions of the world. This, as the shroud traveled around, it picked that up. Some of the mites, uh, things like that was really interesting to me. I mean, it, it's made you really want to believe it a lot more. It's impressive. Like, humanly, I don't think, like, that is another level of love. It's not a... a, a I'm going to see people like, oh, I love you, I'll give you a chocolate. No. I'm giving you more than my life. I'm giving you my suffering. Asking both experts and disciples, who do you say I am? Um, as far as who the man of the shroud is, I, as a, as a person of faith and kind of reviewing the evidence there, it, it seems that a convincing argument can be made that it's, it's Jesus of Nazareth. Visit patchworkheart.org slash shroud to learn more and get exclusive behind the scenes updates for your support. Twenty twenty two is bringing many new and exciting changes to our Carolina Catholic Apostolate built to communicate how to better learn, love and live our Catholic faith. We begin with our name change to Carolina Catholic Media. This reflects the expanded scope of Carolina Catholic Radio to include the development of our podcast, streaming, social media, YouTube, and direct marketing platforms. 2022 is a very important year for the Catholic Church. As a result, Carolina Catholic Media will feature more local news, information, and conversation to reflect what's happening now and how it impacts our local Catholic community. Throughout the year, Carolina Catholic Media will showcase our Catholic schools and homeschools the Charlotte Diocese 50th anniversary, and the two-year worldwide synod process that begins on the diocesan level. We encourage you to get involved, join us, and catch the spirit. The Carolina Catholic Media Apostolate is a 501c3 nonprofit. We are 100% funded by you. Please consider a donation, monthly tithe, or business sponsorship to support our mission and vision to spread the truth of Jesus Christ and our Catholic faith across the Carolinas. Thank you for discerning a role in our apostolate. May God bless you abundantly.